These are dry yeasts, which are less money than the liquid yeast. The liquid yeast is more expensive, but it's what we use um, mostly. And this happens to be a California ale, which is actually the very same yeast that Sierra Nevada Pale Ale is made from, one of their signature yeasts, California. All right, so um, to brew a beer, um, but this is a beginner's way, we would start with malt. No, actually, let me go back. <laughs> I've got my notes. <laughs> the first thing you would do is take your yeast out of the refrigerator because you want the yeast to come up to room temperature. So by the time you've done the brewing, about uh, three to four hours, depending on how good you are at it, how experienced, we want this to come up to about 70 to 75 degrees. So that's the first thing you do. You take this out of the fridge and you, you start shaking it up, but not too vigorously. Okay, so the next thing, um, this is kind of the ideal pot. I'm kind of showing you the things that if you can afford it are ideal to have. So this is an eight gallon stainless steel heavy duty pot, which is wonderful if you can afford it. It's actually not that expensive and it's a lifetime tool. So in here you would actually put six and a half gallons of water. You would bring that to a boil. And I'm, I'm kind of giving you the quick version here, otherwise we could be here for about half an hour. And there's lots of things I'm going to leave out which I'd love to explain to you if you came to the store. So with your six and a half gallons of boiling water, which most people usually actually turn the heat source off so they're not dealing with all that boiling water, you would put the malt extract, and this is organic, and this actually comes from Seven Bridges in Santa Cruz, and they are the only all-organic homebrew store in the world, I believe, but at wow. least here in the U.S. So I really support them a lot, and I buy a lot of organic things from them. So actually, I'm going to have to go back again because I'm a little bit nervous, <laughs> so I've jumped ahead of myself. So <laughs> before you get to the malt extract, what you would actually do First, um, if I can find here. So these are a bunch of the grains I've got. There's many different grains here which you can look at and taste. Um, but say we're just doing a simple pale ale. So we'd have um, a couple of, maybe like two or three pounds of grains. We'd have like the basic two row, maybe some 20, some 60. And then we have a nice organic bag here from Seven Bridges also. We put the grains in the bag and we would make a tea of the grains. So we would steep the grains in this bag in say about a gallon of water or half a gallon depending on the amount of grains you have. You would steep that tea for about one hour at about 153 to 157 degrees water. When that hour is up, you would pick the grain up, and we imagine this is a smaller part. You would pick the grains up, and then you would actually rinse, or the, the correct name is sparaging. You would rinse those grains with about a half a gallon of 170 degree water. So then you have a tea. So then you would put that tea in this pot, and then you bring it up to six and a half gallons. Then you bring that to a boil, and let's so say you might turn it off momentarily while you take the extract, which is, this is all barley, barley malt right here, and this one's organic. You would put that in the pot and dissolve it really well, and then you turn the heat on again and you bring it to a boil. When this comes up to a boil, um, you have to be careful because it's obviously a lot of barley sugar, you have to be careful that it doesn't boil over the top. So you're stirring vigorously to make sure it doesn't come over the top. When you've had what they call the hot break, then and you've stirred it enough, um, and it's at a nice rolling boil, not too high because you don't want it to burn, then you would add the first hops. So these are Cascade, also Sierra Nevada's signature hops. So you might have one or two ounces, 
and you would add these hops and then you would look and you'd start your 60 minute boil. And these are your bittering hops. So they'll be in the boil for 60 minutes. About halfway through. Are you stirring the whole entire time? No, well, you, you don't have to. 60 minutes? Yeah, no, you don't have to. Uh, just occasionally, because you, you have a nice rolling boil, mm -hmm. and you can stir it if you want to, but you actually don't have to because it's just sort of rolling along. But it's kind of nice to stir it and, and look at it and smell it and all of that. So halfway through, about 30 minutes, you might add another addition hops, and these actually are goldings. These are both from our farm. These just happen to be from where I come from in England. Over there, they're called um, East Kent Goldings, um, but you can only call them that if you're grown in East Kent. So over here, they're um, Goldings, but they're beautiful, really wonderful, aromatic, and, and they're bittering hops too. So if you go 30 minutes in the boil, then these are considered flavor hops. And then at the last 15 minutes or 10 minutes or five minutes of the boil, you might add some other hops, and I just, my husband when he brews, because actually he's, he's the brewer in the family, and, and a good one too, um, you might, uh, you can use pellets as well. So there's flowers and pellets. So it, the last 15, 10, five minutes, you add hops, and they're called aromatic hops. So the flavor hops and the aromatic hops, you're not really getting bittering. So there's a lot of hop flavors, um, a lot of, hop differences in a beer. And right now it seems like really hoppy beers are all the rage. You know, if anybody knows Pliny the Elder and uh, Torpedo and, and all of those. I actually prefer a more malty beer, like a Scottish ale or something like that. But, you know, it's nice to sell a lot of hops. 